choice boards. They're not a new thing for the kindergarten and first grade classroom, but should you use them in your classroom? How do you use them in your classroom? When do you not use them in your classroom? What kinds of activities can kids use when they use the choice board? Those are things that you're going to learn today, the tips and tricks of choice boards. Let's go. Hi, my name is Angie and I was in education for 25 years and I did use choice boards in my kindergarten and first grade classroom. I did make some mistakes and I did learn from those mistakes. First of all, what is a choice board? A choice board basically is something, at least how I used it in my classroom, activities the kids could do after they were done with an assignment. You know, you get done with the assignment, you're walking across the room, all of a sudden you have about four kids saying, I'm done, now what? Uh, <laughs> woo, no, they need to have something to do. Kids don't get done at the same time. You have to plan because if they are left to their own devices, they're gonna find something that they should not do, right? So you control the chaos. You give them choices for them to choose from. So how do you set up a choice board? Well, here's a choice board that was in my classroom, a very simple choice board. You probably don't even see it. It's over here. It is just basically I um, when kids got done with an assignment and if they wanted to use the iPad, then they could go and use the iPad. But you know how it is. They're going to use, they're going to play all the games and activities that you really don't want them to play. You want them to play about four or five activities. How to, how do you relay that to them? Well, on the board, I just cut out the little icons for the apps, put them on the board. Those are the four apps that you can use when you use the iPad. Other ones? No. This one? No. That one? No. Those four. Okay. So it is their choice. You can choose from those four. See how I'm controlling the chaos. How do you take that idea and expand it? Well, I'm glad you asked because that is what today's freebie is all about. And over here, you can see a completed choice board, just the headings, right? So underneath the headings are where you're going to put the activities. The headings stay the same, the activities change. But I'm just gonna say something to you. Keep it simple, all right? That is one of my very first mistakes. I got too complicated too fast. Don't make that mistake. Go slow. Start with one heading. What do the headings look like? Okay, here's your ready-made bulletin board. The freebie is in the description down below. So go down to the bottom, look under free resources, click on it, sign up, sends it right to your inbox. All right, so here's just the, the main header. And then you have all your little subheaders ready to go. Black line master. If you want to color it, you go right ahead. So you just laminate them, cut them out, or don't even laminate them. It doesn't matter. Cut them out. It just needs to be someplace where the kids can see what their options are. Do you have to put up all the headers at one time? No, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't make the same mistake I made. Start small. Start with, let's say, art. But what do you put in these stations? Like the art station. What do you put in the art station? Well, okay, again, keep it simple. Construction paper, glue, scissors art. Um, put a couple magazines. You still have some magazines? Probably. Go to the library, see if they have any magazines that they want to get rid of. Put some, like some little sequency things that you get at the craft store at the or at the dollar store, right? Put them in there. Some just, just stuff. Here is the best thing that you can put in an art station. Cheap. So many things to do with this. Let them go. All right. Are you going to put all of this in the art station at once? No. I would put some paper, some crayons, some markers, put some smelly markers in there, right? And the coffee filters. And then in a couple of weeks, take the coffee filters out and, oh, it's fall, put in some sequins. All right, then take the sequins out, la la la, okay? You're asking, I know you are. How many kids can go to the art station? If it was me, I would keep it to four. But what, what, what if you have other kids get done beforehand, right? It's math time. You have five kids get done. They all go racing over to the art station. Urge. No, you have to teach them how to do that. What's going on? What do you expect? If you don't mind them racing over to the art station, that's fine. Let them go. But in my class, it was when you are done with your math, you will keep it at your desk so that I can look at it. Then you may stand up, push in your chair and go do something that will keep you busy learning until the rest of us are done. Will I hear your voice? No. Will, I, will you be asking me questions? No. 
Will you be making a big mess? Oh, no! You will do something to keep you busy and learning and quiet during that time that the rest of us are finishing up our learning objective. All right, and you'll practice getting stuff in, getting stuff out. This station only has four people at it. So on my early finisher board, underneath that, I would write a card or just write under it since that's on a whiteboard. I would just write under it art station and I would put uh, coffee filters and a little uh, picture and I would put the number four. Only four people can go. But then they're like, you have six people that get done. What do they do now? The next thing is something that's out all the time and everybody in your classroom can do it at once. In fact, sometimes I had everybody in my classroom doing this activity at once because I needed them to be busy and learning while I did a little something. Let me grab it. For those of you who know me and who follow this station, what? You don't follow this station? Ah, uh, do a follow, do a subscribe, and give me a thumbs up while we're thinking about it, right? This is something that I used in my classroom all the time. Every student had one, and it is an individual or pair set of activities that they have been taught and that they can use. It is skill based. All right. So they are practicing their reading. They are practicing their writing. They are practicing their math. They're fun games that they can do on their own. Fun games and activities. Here's a pizza one right here. Okay. If you're interested in this, I will put the link down below. I think right now we're at 65 games and I have a whole bunch almost done. When I put them in to the early finisher solution, the price of course is going to go up. All right, but each kid has one of these. If they look across, they wanted to go to art. Oh, darn, uh, there's already four people there. They can grab this and get this done. They won't, they won't be sad because this is fun. I've had kids like during free time want to take this home. Can I please take my, my lip binder home? Please, please. No, you may not. It has to stay at school. All right, so that is one thing that they can use. And I just put that under like uh, reading or math or maybe do a separate heading for that. That is unlimited. Another section is science. And kids love sciencey things, right? But you need to keep it simple. This is one that I put out almost right away and just put a bunch of leaves in there, a bunch of a basket full of leaves and a, uh, a magnifying glass or a microscope or something like that, a bunch of leaves, right? Another great thing to put in the science stuff, tape measure right? Uh, show them that whatever material is in there, they can uh, lay it out end to end, measure how many, this kind of leaf, five, five of a maple leaf is um, 42, 42 inches. Five of um, an elm leaf is 23 inches. Which one has the bigger leaf? All right. So they just like to manipulate it, interact with it. It's fun. All right. And then you can have them okay, how many, you know, this rock is, weighs this much, this rock weighs this much. They design it, they build it, all right? But keep it simple. Don't do things like they're pouring this and that into everything, all right? No, don't do that. No, <laughs> no, no, not a good idea. Same with like art, don't do paint because you want it to be simple. Something they can get out quickly, something they can put away quickly. That is something that we're going to talk about in, in just a second of when to do it, when not to do it. Okay, let's go through just a few more things that you can put out. How about for reading? Now, reading books, um, they're probably not going to just race to it and, and love it. They just aren't. I mean, you can have some kids that race to it and love it, especially if you put out things that are like theme based. You've read it in the classroom and they want to look at it a little more closely. These are kind of like the, the, the special books, right? But what I like to do is to put little books that they can create in the book station, right? So these little books are one page and they have multiple, um, they're one sheet of paper, I should say, and they have multiple, see how they're one sheet like that? And they have multiple pages. Do you not know how to make this book? Uh, I will put a link over here, zoop, right there. Go to that video. It is super easy. You can make it beforehand for them, but I wouldn't do that because you want this to be easy on you. Teach them how to do it once. They can do it again and again and again. Just supply them with the materials. So that's reading. So every month or so you swap in and out, maybe some different colored construction paper, some different um, books done. How about the create one? Well, I like to just do things that I can just put in there 
and, and take out quickly. Create with these. Create with Legos. All right. Now I'm not going to put both of these in at the same time. No, because then you'll have Legos in here and the, no. All right. Put a couple bags of Legos in. Done. Take out your Legos. Put these in. Done. All right. Swap them in and out. Here's another one. I'll, I'll put some affiliate links to some of these tried and true fun things. This one, the kids didn't really <laughs> do the cards, but they would create their own and have a fun time with that. That's what I want. Some critical thinking going on. Okay. But just remember, start slow. Then you can work in other little categories as you go. And remember to show them how to get it out, how to put it back. Because this should be something that they can do independently quickly. They get done with their math. They do whatever they need to do. They go over and they grab it and they're quiet and they get it done. All right. Then when you say it's time to clean up, they can put it back together. And within 10 seconds, 30 seconds, they're back at their seat, ready as a whole class for the next activity. So let's talk a little bit about some mistakes I made when doing choice boards, early finisher choice boards. The first mistake I made was I let them do it too often during the day. When I let them do it too often during the day, it kind of lost its novelty and they would get bored with stuff. And then I found myself, I have to switch things in and out, in and out, in and out. The times I picked like two times during the day that they could use the choice board. Those for me were uh, math. After we did a whole group math activity, I gave the assignment, the, the worksheet, the whatever, and I had kids done in five seconds, literally, and had nothing to do. And I had some kids that didn't even have their name on their paper and they couldn't even count to 10, right? So you need something for that time that you can do individual or small group instruction and keep the other ones busy. That's how I did it, okay? So math time was a time that I did use this. The other times that I would use it were like the weirdo times that you have during your day, like uh, the nurse is checking everybody's eyes or it's picture day or something is happening and not everybody is with you and engaged at the same time. Then you can say, okay, we can have a choice board time. Um, as the nurse is calling people in and out, this is a choice board time. Please find something to keep yourself busy and learning. All right. And they saw the choice board. Done. You've trained them how to do it. Another time that I would do it is when we had indoor recess. Okay. Indoor recess. Not fun. So if it was indoor recess, what are we going to do? You all, you can do something with the choice board. Another time that they could do it was like during after art activities, when you have somebody who's like done and then there's somebody else and 20 minutes later, they're still coloring and things like that. Okay. So you need something after art activities to keep your early finishers fit, busy and learning. Here's when I would not let them use it whenever they wanted. Like at first they would be like, can I do the, the free choice board? Can I do the choice board? And I'd be like, no, I, I will let you know when you can do the choice board. Do not ask me. If you have to ask me, you, you already will know the answer is no. Because if you have to ask, it's no. And I would always say to them, you know, every day after math time, we, you have an opportunity for that. And then you have some kids like, but I never get to because I never get it done first. And it's like, uh, that's okay. Because another time that I would be is like on Fridays, if every, if you have all your work done, we have our free choice time, we have our maker time. If you're done, then you can do your, the choice board. Okay. I always, it's really important that those kids who are late finishers have an opportunity to interact with these as well. Cause then they're not feeling left out. They're not feeling frustrated, but they need to try it to make sure that they are getting what they need as well. Make sure that you put some time during the week that they can go and, and do the choice board as well. That was a fast and furious and hurry up and give you all the information kind of video. If you have questions, which I'm sure you do, put them in the comments down below and then I can answer them or um, do another video on choice boards or um, a little bit more about the early finisher solution and the lip binder. Choice boards can be a great solution and, and sanity saver for you and your kids. Keep them busy learning. All right. Don't, don't just set them free. <laughs>
because <laughs> I tried that, that doesn't work. I want you to remember that the creator of the universe loves you and I think you're pretty amazing too. And if you're a Jesus follower like me, I want to encourage you to spend a little bit of time each day reading in your Bible and talking to God because honestly, he is going to give you the most wonderful ideas and give you a sense of peace for your classroom and just give you the wisdom that you need. Put him first and everything else will follow. All right, that is it for today. I will see you in the next video. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.